Hello and welcome back. As project managers and team members in the project, we interact with huge amounts of data on a daily basis. If we need to work manually with these huge data sets, it will take forever for us to complete our daily tasks. In order to increase the efficiency of our work, we need to know some basic and advanced functions from Microsoft Excel or any other data analysis platform that we are using. In today's video, you're going to learn 10 essential functions of Microsoft Excel, which will come in handy in your day-to-day -day tasks. So make sure to stick till the end of the video. In case you're new here, in Engineeringly, we teach a wide range of topics from project management to data analysis, structural and civil engineering. So if that's something like you're interested in, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram or LinkedIn. So let's dive into 10 essential Microsoft Excel functions every project manager and every project team member should know. The first function is the F function. So in the project context, how can we use this function? For example, in here I have a list of tasks. Besides that, I have the due dates for these tasks. So in the status here, I need to see if the due date is later than today's date, it should be overdue. Otherwise, there should be another label called time left for this task. So for that purpose, I'll use the F function. And I'll write down equal sign F open parenthesis if this date is later than today's date. So I'll write down today open parenthesis and close parenthesis. And as you can see, today's date is 22nd of June 2024. So if this criteria is met, then it should be as overdue. Otherwise, it should be as time left for this task. Close parenthesis and press enter. And now let's drag it to the end here. So as you can see, the first task is overdue. Since the due date for this task was 8th of January 2024. And as you can see, it's almost six months past this deadline. And same goes for the other ones. The next function that we have is the count a function. So basically the count a function counts all the entries in the data set. So as you can see, we have a long list of item codes along with their quantity purchased in each of the purchases. So if I need to know how many purchases I have made in this project, I need to use the count a function. So I have to count the item codes in here. For that purpose, I'll write down count A. And remember that the count A will leave only the blank cells. All the cells containing a text or a letter or anything will be counted and will be taken into account. So I'll select this cell and then I'll hold Control Shift and Down arrow key. Then I'll press Enter. And as you can see, we have made 232 purchases in this project. The next function that we are going to talk about is the COUNTF function. So COUNTF functions counts item in a range based on a specific criteria. So for example, if I need to know how many items or how many purchases contained the item number 1205. For that purpose, I'll write down 1205 in here. And in here, I'll write down COUNTF, open parenthesis, and I'll select this range. And in the criteria, what I will do is I have two methods in here. Number one is to write down 1205 and press enter. And as you can see, 40 purchases included the item 1205. And in the meantime, if I want to make this dynamic, for example, I have 1204 in here. So for that purpose, what I can do is I will remove the 1205 from here and click this cell, press enter, and I'll apply the same to this cell as well. So as you can see, all the items will be counted that how many purchases contain these items. Next function that we are going to talk about is the SUMF function. In this scenario, if you want to know what quantity of a specific item is purchased from the beginning of the project till the end, for that purpose, we can use the SUMF function. For example, in here, I have the quantities. So if I want to know the quantity of the 1202 item in here, for that purpose, I'll use the SUMF function. So I'll write down equal sign SUMF 
open parentheses in the range, I'll select this range and then I'll put a comma. The criteria in here should be, since I was looking for item number 1202, so I'll write down 1202, then comma, and the sum range is basically the range where you want to add the values in. So the sum range is this range. And I'll press enter, and as you can see, 205 pieces of this item, or 1202, are purchased. The next function that we are going to talk about is the average F function. So for example, for the item 1204, I want to know in each of the purchases, on average, what quantity of this item was purchased. So for that purpose, we'll write down equal sign, average F, open parenthesis, and the range should be this range in comma. So again, for selecting all the ranges, what I do is I click here, then I hold control shift and down arrow key. It selects all the cells for me, which contain a number or contain a character or something. So in here for the criteria, I'll select this cell and the average range should be this one. And press enter. As you can see, on average, each time we made a purchase of 1204 item, on average, we bought around six pieces of that. So the next function that we have in here is the VLOOKUP function. This is basically one of the most important functions that every project manager should know. This can make your life much, much easier. So for example, as you can see in this scenario, I have the item codes. In front of them, I have the item names in here. And I have this long list. So if someone asked me to write down the names of each of the items in here, and if I did that manually, there are around 232 items in here. So manually, it will take a lot amount of time. And that's not efficient use of our time. For that purpose, we're using the VLOOKUP function. So I'll write down VLOOKUP. The V stands for vertical lookup. In other words, it is looking up the values in columns for us. So VLOOKUP, open parenthesis, and the lookup value should be this item code. Next thing is, to select the table where we want to look up for this value. And the table that we have is this table. I'll make this absolute by pressing a four since I don't want this range to move if I'm dragging this down. Then I'll write down comma. The next thing is the column index number. So where is basically the thing or the information located? And here the information is located in the second column of the table. So for that purpose, I'll write down two. One more thing that you should bear in mind is that whatever value or the lookup value that you have in here is, for example, 1204, that should be located in the left side of your table. If that's in the middle somewhere, your lookup function won't work for that. Again, I'll write down comma, and then we have two options, either true or false. For false, we will have the exact match which means that for 1204, the exact name will be found. But if you write down true, that will look up an approximate value for us. In all the cases, in most of the cases that we are using the VLOOKUP functions, we are writing down the false. So I'll write down false and press enter. And as you can see, 1204 is paint. So as you can see in here, it's paint and 1202 is concrete and everything is in place. Next and most important one is the index and match function. So in order to give you a demo, for example, in here we have April. In April, as you can see, we have total work hours to be 148 and the total expenses for this month was 12,000. If I write down, for example, January instead of April, as you can see, the total work hours have changed and besides that, the expenses have changed and the expenses were same for April and January, that's why it didn't move. But then if I write down February in here, uh, so as you can see, the total work hours and the expenses, they will be updated. So how do we do this? So I'll remove these and I'll rewrite the function. So for index and match function, so I would write down equal sign, index, and open parenthesis. So the first thing is to select the array. So the table area for which we were looking for values is this one. So I'll select this area and make this absolute. 
The reason that I'm making this absolute is that if you're going to drag down this formula down and to the right, this range will not move. So in order to make it absolute, press the F4 key and then write down comma. So with the row number in here, I'll write down match open parentheses. So for the lookup value, what I will do is I will select this cell and make this absolute, then comma, and I'll select the month names from here and make this absolute as well since I don't want it to move downstairs that the range in here, this should be constant. So again, comma for exact my zero, close parenthesis again for the column number, write down match, open parenthesis, the lookup value for the column should be this one. And again, comma, I'll select the titles from here, make them absolute by pressing the four, zero, close the parenthesis twice, press enter. Then what I will do is I'll drag this to the right. So as you can see in February, we have 156 and 16,000. So if I'm making this June, as you can see, everything is updated for June. So next function that we are going to talk about today is the network disk function. So basically, how does this function help us? In most of the cases that we are preparing project schedules, we don't know the exact number of work days between specific dates. So for example, you need to exclude the weekends, the holidays and everything. So in this example, we will exclude the weekends from our duration. So for that purpose, I'll write down network days. So we have two functions in here. One, in, one is network days, which excludes only holidays. And another is network days dot intl. So we'll basically use this function in here. Double click this one and the start date should be this. And we have the end date in here. And again, the weekend should be Saturday and Sunday, for example, in our case. So I'll write down one and then press enter. So as you can see, we have the number of working days available between all these dates. Next useful function is the trim function. So in most of the cases, from my own experience, most of the data is received in a really disordered manner. For example, as you can see, the name Muhammad is written in here, and we have a lot of spaces added for unknown reasons, and the name is not written down in the correct way. So in order to clean this, I'll write down equal sign, trend, open parenthesis, select this one, press enter. If we apply it to the next as well, as you can see, everything will be fine, except for the capital and lower cases. In order to make them perfect as well, we will use the proper function in here. So we'll write down proper. And in this function, I'll select this one, press enter and apply it to the rest of the cells as well. As you can see, all the names will be written in a proper manner. Last but not least in here is the concatenate function. This is also a very useful function. And so basically we have the first name and last names in here. What I want to see is the full name of my employees. For example, I have Alan Walker and then people like this. So for that purpose, I'll write down concatenate and double click this one. Next one should be this, then I'll write down a comma. Then I need to leave a space between the first name and the last name. So for that purpose, double quote space, double quotes comma and select the last name, press enter. And as you can see, everything should be properly in place. So this brings us to the end of this video. If you think that we missed something and you want to add more from your experience, please don't hesitate to comment down below. If you found the information in this video helpful, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram and LinkedIn for more useful insights about civil engineering, data analysis, and project management. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.